Hey YouTube, I wanted to make a video on my uh, process for overland navigation. I'm relatively new to overlanding and uh, in fact I've only got one trip under my belt, uh, but I did a lot of planning and what I ended up deciding worked perfectly for me. So I just want to take a quick walk, well, I'll hope it's quick, but I wanted to take a walk through uh, what I use and why, what I do before a trip, during a trip, and after a trip. One thing I found out pretty quickly was that not one solution was going to do everything that I would hope it would do. Uh, so what I ended up with was a combination of things. Uh, first of all, since I was going to take this trip on my own, and I knew that I'd probably be taking more trips on my own, it was really important for me to have something that allowed me to share my plan with people and communicate with them once I was on the road. For that, I chose the DeLorme InReach SE. They do make an Explorer version, which has some mapping capability in it, uh, but I don't think it quite stacks up to a dedicated GPS app or unit. And now that I had invested in that, I wanted to keep the rest of this process as affordable as possible. So I already own an iPad. So I went looking for applications I could use on the iPad that uh, were easy to use. What I uh, decided on was the GPS HD by Motion X. Uh, it allows you to load custom maps, and so you get a variety of views on your uh, trip. And uh, I found that some maps are better in different situations. Uh, so here you get kind of them, you get them all. And then it also has really nice big buttons, so that as you're driving, uh, it's easy to use the app. And just a quick side note that you're seeing my iPhone instead of iPad because the iPad's too old for uh, screen capture. In the planning stage, I like to see as much detail as I can. Since I'm doing some of these trips on my own, I want to be sure I know as much as I, I can ahead of time. Granted, uh, you will never know exactly what you're going to come across until you're there. Um, so the caveat here is that as much as I look ahead of time, I'm not ever banking on it. I take my paper maps with me, my compass with me, uh, I've got my recovery gear, uh, but that said, Google Earth Pro at least lets me fly a route um, so that I can see how whether I'm on developed roads or dirt roads or trails. Uh, it lets me look at uh, history. If there's a Wikipedia pages linked to things like the Barlow Road, which is uh, part of the Oregon Trail, um, I'll be able to understand more about what I'm driving through. And uh, it also allows me a lot of flexibility in maps. I know that Caltopo is a favorite for a lot of people. Um, and in fact, I've used that as well. And the maps there are great. You can, for $20, uh, pay for a link to Caltopo and put that in Google Earth Pro. So you get all those same benefits with the photos, history, and satellite imagery. And then lastly, uh, for storing data, I use Garmin Basecamp. Uh, when you're recording tracks and you're logging uh, points in quick succession, your data files get quite large. And so Google Earth Pro has a more difficult time with loading a bunch of those kind of tracks. So Garmin Basecamp, um, I don't have any maps for it. I don't have a GPS device for it but it can handle a lot of data. And so that's where I plan to keep all of my tracks and waypoints. Now that we've seen the overview, let's take a closer look at each one of these things and I'll show you how each one of them works and where uh, these things fall into the overall process. If I'm starting a completely new track, I start with Google Earth. Uh, I had seen somebody's video on their trip through Oregon and they included a lot of pictures of the places they'd been. And I thought these looked like things I'd want to see for myself. So I, uh, I noticed the name Shirk Ranch in one of the photos. So I went looking for that. I had to do a little bit of Googling, but eventually I found out where it was located. And now here I've located it in Google Earth. I'm able to look at uh, all of the various pictures that people have posted and uh, I've I've pinpointed this as a place that I want to see. So then uh, once we've picked a spot to see, the next part is to zoom out and see uh, what the nearest major roadway is and then figure out what the entry point is from that roadway. Uh, 
this this might be a little easier uh, with a topo map view um, something that's got the roads permanently marked on it with Google Earth the roads only show up at uh, certain zoom points and here I am deciding whether to veer left or veer right uh, the left hand route looks a little more interesting since the other is just a straight shot north so the next thing is to start drawing our path now one thing you have to keep in mind is that once you've got this tool selected moving around the map doesn't work the same way um, any mouse click is going to drop a new point on your path so uh, in between a few of these points uh, what I'm doing is using the arrow keys to get around you'll see here too that if at any point you do uh, you do have a miss click if you hover over that point uh, you'll be able to drag that back in line and then later on too you'll see uh, that there are opportunities to add and remove points uh, in case you want to cut a section of your track out or like in my case I missed one of the major viewpoints and so I needed to make sure I added it back in and now that we've finished our track uh, I try to do a little bit of cleanup uh, by creating a folder specific to each of these items and then making sure that all of these things uh, tracks and waypoints are saved into the same folder that way when you export that folder it comes out as a single file and all of your stuff's included in that the next step then is uh, to fly the route to get an idea of the road surface obviously here in this kind of terrain it's easy to tell uh, I find this particularly handy in heavily forested areas or uh, terrain with a lot of uh, variation in the elevation now let's take a look at how to edit a route and let's also show you a little bit why using a variation of maps is handy uh, we're taking a look at a spot here you can see that Google Earth plots the route one way it's a right-handed s curve but if we take a look at uh, topo maps uh, we'll see that it's actually the opposite uh, so what we want to be able to do is you know if we've traced the Google road we want to be able to move the road back over to what we see on the topo maps um, in this case it is a washout so we want to make sure it's something that we might be able to get around uh, and here with the US Forest Service road or map we see the clearest picture of how this road goes through this spot and uh, we will take a closer look at how I got these maps into Google Earth one that I find handy is the uh, map builder overlay uh, the nice thing here is you get some of the topographical features from a traditional topo map you can add those to a um, satellite view uh, plus uh, with the 40 foot contour lines then you also get the, the elevation changes now here we are in Cal Topo uh, I've logged into my account and uh, it, it is a great program in fact it draws lines very similar to Google Earth you're seeing here that you just do the same thing clicking certain waypoints saving the route if we had done this using uh, what uh, Cal Topo loads which it looks here to be the exact same as the Google map you can see if we follow that road we're gonna come across the same error in our path change it to a topo map and bingo there's the same thing we just saw in Google Earth now uh, with a with a paid account which I think is a $20 annual membership uh, you are able to uh, save a lot of maps create PDFs from those get offline access and here in this uh, account section uh, is where you you um, you sign up and then you will be emailed uh, a way to load the maps into Google Earth it's as simple as downloading a uh, I think it's a KML or KMZ file 
something compatible with Google Earth. Double click on that. It'll load up in your temporary places and then you can drag it up to your, uh, your permanent folder there. So here's that spot where I forgot uh, to put in the major viewpoint. You see that uh, I've ended up drawing a path that drives right past some of the some of the uh, better viewpoints and so I either want to mark that turn off with a waypoint and label it uh, or I can just add points to this path. Dropping the pin is is quick and easy but uh, when I'm out driving it's something I might miss. So instead I've opted to add points to this path and to do that you select the path, right click on it and get info and just like before you you mouse over one point and from that point any new clicks uh, will be new points and eventually uh, you'll be able to double back and get rid of this uh, this sideline here that's cutting straight back to the original path. Now let's say that I changed my mind I wanted to get rid of a section of path it's as simple as the same thing right click on the path get info mouse over and click one of the points and then just hold the delete key from that point and it'll it'll delete everything before it so when you're editing and you select a point and you want to add it adds everything after the point you selected if you want to delete it deletes things before the point you selected okay now here we are back at our uh, trip that we planned to shirk ranch it is time for us to take this out of uh, Google Earth and store it over in uh, Basecamp so we just uh, take this whole folder and it checks out everything that we need is in there and we export that as a KML uh, you can also save it as a KMZ file but I don't know that it makes much of a difference here we can import uh, KML KMZ a whole variety of file types and there it is uh, everything looks good and I also like to rename the route uh, so that I can designate whether it's something that I've downloaded or something that I've just planned myself or uh, if this is something that uh, a trip that I've taken and recorded with my iPad okay let's say it's a few months later and we're ready to take this trip so now it's time to get this route to the iPad uh, it's a pretty simple all you've got to do is export this what you do have to know is that uh, Motion X only imports GPX files. Um, it's another great thing about using Basecamp to store all of my files. While I can plan in Google Earth, it only exports KML or KMZ. I can import those to Basecamp and then still be able to export these in the file format that works for Motion X. So it's a, it's a great middle step that helps you tie your process together. Now, rather than try to uh, plug in my iPad and sync files and all of that, I just find it easiest to email it to myself. Open my email on the iPad, download the attachment, and then when we select the file uh, in the email, we'll be able to open it in Motion X. Okay, and now here we are over on the iPad. Again, this is my iPhone, but it'd normally be my iPad. You get the email. You click and hold on the attachment until the options come up, then you select Motion X GPS. It'll automatically import it. And now you'll find it in your tracks. If you go to Menu, Tracks, Import, Shirk Ranch. Great, everything's working. Now, earlier we saw the feature to add custom maps to Motion X GPS. To do that, you click Setup, Custom Map Types, New, and then you type in the name and URL for the tiles of the map. There's a bit of a tutorial in the app here that explains map tiles and uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates. 
x and y are the coordinates and z is a zoom level. Um, you want to be careful when you're entering the URL. Uh, your autocorrect will try to take over and uh, so there may be a fair amount of backspacing and retyping. The other thing too that uh, if you copy and paste the links that I include down at the in the description for these maps uh, you may see the brackets replaced by percent signs and uh, dollar and letter or I'm sorry not to dollar but number and letter characters um, you'll want to just remember to convert all that extra junk back into the brackets now what you're seeing here is that each of the maps has a different limit on the zoom level it looks like most of the topo maps have a limit of 14 uh, zoom while I think the US Forest Service map zooms to a level of 15 that's another reason I like that better when I'm in the national forests now the most important thing to remember when using a smartphone or tablet is that these maps only download when there's a wireless connection or cellular signal so out in the middle on these trips uh, if you didn't pre-download the map section for your trip, all you would see is a blank screen with the route on it and your marker along that route. So before we go into the menu to download the maps, we want to check on two things. First, we want to get an idea of what zoom range we want. This is a pretty short track, so 10 for minimum zoom and 14 for maximum zoom is going to be best course these maps don't go to 15 so your max will always be 14 go set up then check the second thing we go to custom map types select all of these maps if you want and make sure that the download map for offline use button is turned on now that those two things are checked we go back to map downloads download new maps choose the one that you want to use I usually do all three and now you've got a zone that you can drag around. You can move it either by clicking on that box on the left or by double, uh, double tapping the screen and you can move the map around. Zoom in, zoom out. Uh, you've, got, you've got an option between a circle or more of a rectangular shape. I usually leave a little extra on the edges uh, just in case I decide to travel a little bit further than the route or travel off the route to the sides. Then the next thing is to set those zoom levels we checked on first, 10 to 14. Click download and go on through the process and you'll be good to go. Now let's pretend for a second that we've taken the trip and recorded it. Uh, and we want to send this back into Basecamp at this point. It's pretty much a reverse of how we got it to our iPhone to begin with. I'm sorry, iPad. Uh, you hit Menu, you go to Tracks. It would show up in Recently Added, but since we haven't actually gone, for now we'll just have to do this process with the imported track. You hit these three blue lines on the right here, and they give you a bunch of options of things that you can do. Let's go down to share. Now you can share it either by social media or by email. And I always just email it right back to myself. And then once I've got it on my computer, then it's just a matter of importing it or saving it to your desktop, saving it somewhere, then going to Basecamp and importing it into Basecamp. That's it. Uh, hopefully you found enough information here to save you some time while you get started. Uh, I know that when I was looking into this, it was easy to find tutorials on particular applications, but not as much about the process from end to end. Uh, so hopefully this fills that void. In, in, or, in order to do that, I did have to breeze through a lot of the details. So if you have questions on any particular piece, ask in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I've got four trips planned this summer, uh, all of them in Oregon. Uh, I've got some cool video equipment on the way. so. Hopefully in fall, I'll have a lot of cool stories to tell. So if you're interested in seeing some of the new videos, uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll have something for you later on. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.